Hello everyone. It's been a few fortnights since I last uploaded a video, so I thought I'd do an update on what's been going on with my audio setup since then. I've got some equipment here that's new to me at least, so I thought I'd share it and let you all start making fun of me in the comments on my terrible taste in audio. Now, in the last video about the Grado Green cartridge, I showed off this big honking cabinet I got from my AV stuff. If you saw that video, you might have noticed these two boxes sitting here at the bottom. These are an Onkyo receiver and an Integra CD changer. Now, you might also be wondering, why did I get a vintage receiver after I already invested in an SMSL receiver? Well, the answer is relatively simple. When I first got this SMSL amplifier, I was using my turntable as a headphone only setup. I didn't have speakers yet. When I finally decided to get some speakers and complete this setup, I quickly realized that the speaker outputs on this amplifier don't work at all. I found some, I found some speakers that I liked. I plugged some speaker cables into the back terminals here and absolutely nothing came out of the back. I spent a lot of time after that checking and rechecking all the impedance levels on the speakers and the amplifier to make sure I hadn't picked the wrong speakers for the SMSL. And I even plugged in a pair of speakers that I knew were the right amperage and that I knew worked into the back of this. And still the SMSL was not making a sound. I finally opened up the case and checked the voltage on these circuits. And sure enough, there was nothing getting through to the back terminals. Now, the cost of repairing this SMSL, of sending it back, would have been greater than the price I bought it for. So, unfortunately, I declared this one a dud and started browsing Kijiji, as always, for a better working receiver. And fortunately, just a little while later, I found this thing. Whoops. <laughs> this is an Onkyo TX-17 receiver amplifier. It's not the fanciest receiver ever made, but it's been kept in good condition since it was made around the mid-1980s. As you can see, the inside is very clean, and most importantly, everything runs relatively nicely. It's got its own built-in phono preamp, like most receivers from the time do, so I don't need to use the little Behringer preamp anymore. And best of all, it has speaker outs that really actually work. Now I can listen to my music loud on my pair of Mica MB42X bookshelf speakers. Uh, these Mica speakers are a great buy, by the way, and deliver really great sound for their price, so I would highly recommend them if you're looking for bookshelf speakers. The sound quality of the Onkyo is very good for its price point. The Onkyo puts out a clear signal, and the Mica speakers deliver it really well. The preamp in here sounds just as good, if not better, than the Behringer portable preamp I was using before. The Onkyo has a signal to noise ratio of 75 decibels for the phono input and 85 decibels for the line level input, which is respectable, and it puts out 25 watts per channel at 8 ohms, which pairs well with the speakers I'm using right now. Now the sound quality on here is very good when I play it through the rear speaker outputs. I can't hear any extra noise in the signal from the amplifier when I'm using the micas, and the sound is very balanced and neutral. The main weak point for the TX-17 seems unfortunately to be the headphone output. There's a subtle but definite hiss in the background when you plug in a pair of cans here. On some headphones it's more obvious than others, and once you start playing music you may not notice it very much, but unfortunately it's still there. I hear this happens often with older mid-level receivers. The headphones often use the same circuit as the main amplifier circuit, just stepped down, and the capacitors involved in that aren't usually the best. But it is what it is, and I'm not exactly sure if I can improve it in any way. As it is, it's working pretty well for now. I can listen to my music through any of the outputs and enjoy it. It's very good quality for its age, and I was able to find it for not too much money. Speaking of high quality equipment for very little money, I also got this Integra CD player for absolutely no money this past fall. 
This is the Integra CDC 3.4 CD changer, which holds six CDs for all your 44 kilohertz 16-bit audio needs. As I said before, this came to me for free because a friend at my work didn't need it anymore, and offered it to other people at the office. No one else wanted it, maybe because no one's listening to CDs anymore, so I said I'd take it, and it was mine. Since I've now got a receiver that can take three inputs, this big heavy box fits right into my setup. Actually, it wasn't until I got the player home that I looked into it and realized what a high-end model this actually is. The CDC 3.4, which is apparently still being made by Integra, is relatively low price compared to other audiophile CD players, but is well respected in audio circles, and for good reason as it turns out. This unit uses two Wolfson multi-bit DACs, one for each channel, that oversampled 192 kilohertz 24 bits for the highest fidelity possible. According to the front panel, it also uses something called Vector Linear Shaping Circuitry, which their website explains is a specialized extra analog filter that completely removes any pulse noise from the digital signal. Now, I don't know for sure how necessary that circuitry actually is, but I do know that the end signal it ultimately puts out is exceptional. This is probably the best, clearest sounding CD player I've heard. The DACs in here work beautifully. They seem to bring out all the detail in a CD's audio. And I say this having only used the analog outputs from the unit. The Integra also has a coaxial output and an optical output for that pure digital signal chain. But my receiver is old and only lists tape inputs, so I'm stuck with RCA jacks, though I may not be missing much. All in all, this is an excellent device that would be well worth paying for. So, that's a tour of my crummy little setup. It may not be the best, but it gives me a lot of enjoyment in a compact space. Is this the be-all and end-all for my setup? Probably not. I can see some improvements coming up fairly shortly. Wink, wink! And speaking of improvements, I have to give a shout out to Leyland9999 and Tiferot, two viewers who pointed out something with my turntable that in retrospect seems very obvious. After I uploaded my review of the Great O Green cartridge, they both pointed out that my cartridge and head shell seemed to be slightly angled, and that this could be causing some audio issues. I checked it with a spirit level, and sure enough, yes. The head shell and cartridge were on a small but significant angle inwards towards the spindle. I had trouble adjusting the head shell's angle on its own, so I improvised a small shim to flatten the cartridge's angle. I don't know if you can see it well from this shot, but the needle is now much more perpendicular to the groove. The difference in sound quality isn't massive, but it is noticeable. The channels are more balanced and sibilance is slightly less of an issue. I say slightly because inner groove distortion is still the Grado Green's Achilles heel as it seems. To be perfectly honest, I kind of feel stupid for not noticing this sooner. I suppose because someone else had tuned up this turntable when I bought it, I just trusted them that the cartridge was in the right place and that I shouldn't adjust things. Well, lesson learned. So thank you Leyland and Tiferot for improving my vinyl experience. If I had any merchandise, I would send you some, but I don't. And thank all of you for watching this. I love you all, and I hope you'll be here next time when I talk about the massive stockpile of records I've collected since my last review. If you've made it this far, you're probably the kind of person who will enjoy that kind of thing. So, see you then.